If you think you know everything about where we came from, you haven't considered these unsettling discoveries that rewrote the history books. We have yet to definitely prove whether ancient civilizations experimented with revolutionary ideas before previously thought, or whether far-flung people connected with each other prior to what is currently accepted by historians, or whether primitive humans hung out with interstellar travelers. But the mounting evidence of unbelievable events are constantly changing what we know about our own history. So join the hub as we break the mold of our modern society by looking at stone slabs and metallic texts from the distant past. And while you need to be an expert in the ancient world to lead any archaeological digs yourself, you only need to know the meaning of the word subscribe to keep following the hub. The Metal Books of Jordan Found in an isolated cave in Jordan, these 2,000-year-old booklets might be a missing link in the story of Christianity. Each page is the size of a credit card, made of thin sheets of lead bound together in three rings, and carved with ancient texts about Jesus. Although several theologians challenge the authenticity of each codex, experts dating the metal believe that the decay is too complex to be forged. If true, these booklets, first found in 2008, would be the oldest documents referencing Jesus in existence. Of the bombshell claims made by these texts, they argue that Jesus did not intend to start his own religion, but instead aimed to solidify the traditions of the Jewish faith from the era of King David. These also claim that Jesus' philosophy was to include equal placement to men and women as God is both male and female. Interestingly, if the era of the books is proved true, these volumes would be certain the oldest known artistic rendering of Jesus in existence. Even more interesting, all of the codex combined have seven seals, matching the description of the Book of Revelations. Are these famous metal booklets the embodiment of the final text in the Bible? Only more research will tell. The World's Oldest Pyramids When you think of the pyramids, you probably first think of Egypt's pyramids in Giza. Maybe your thoughts drift to pyramids in Mexico or South America, but it's unlikely your imagination first goes to triangular structures in Bosnia. Researcher Sam Osmanagic claims that several hills near Bosnia and the Herzegovina border are actually part of the oldest and largest pyramid complex in the world. If they match his calculations, these steep pyramids would be taller and more ancient than Giza, built 12,000 years ago, at a time when Europe was under a thick sheet of ice, and humankind was a scattered band, barely beginning to civilize itself. These triangular hills covered in trees and grass are referred to as the Pyramid of the Sun at 350 feet tall, and the Pyramid of the Moon at 720 feet tall. Sam's other fantastical beliefs, including a theory that Hitler survived World War II and lived for a time in Antarctica, have cast doubt on his findings. A group of geologists and archaeologists also argue that the Bosnian hills could be formed naturally in the Earth. Whether his pyramids are truly the work of a man or some other being remains in dispute. He's become an icon in his home country and inspired many of them to hope for a glorious past buried within their landscape. The Face on Mars in 1976, NASA's Viking 1 orbited Mars, snapping photos and searching for flat surfaces to serve as a landing location for the Viking 2 spacecraft. The images revealed unsurprising black and white landscapes, ridges, and long dead soil until one shocking picture seemed to show proof of an advanced civilization. A face made of rock seemed to be staring back at the researchers scrolling through the images. Located in the Martian region known as Sidonia, NASA scientists published the photographs, describing it as a rock formation where light and shadow give the impression of a human face. In response, the public had obsessively compared it to the Egyptian pharaoh, similar to the Sphinx, and believed it's part of some extinct eight-eyed alien civilization being covered up by the U.S. government. For their part, many at NASA probably wished there was an ancient civilization so they could take more taxpayer dollars and fund the research. The original photos were done at 43 meters per pixel, but new photos at 1.56 meters showed that the face looked more like a weathered mesa and not unlike a rock formation you find in the southwest United States. But couldn't a man-made or alien-made structure have eroded over time? Only upon exploration could we put this theory to bed. Ingots from Atlantis at a shallow depth of 10 feet, divers found a remarkable shipwreck off the coast of Sicily. The ruined ship was around 2,600 years old, and on board, they found complex metalwork that only advanced smiths could have molded. Known as orichalcum, the ancient Greek text hinted that this metal's existence, but it had never been seen before modern eyes. Invented by the legendary character of Cadmus, the metal became part of lore when it was used by Plato in his famous description of the mythological Atlantis. The philosopher wrote that the fantastical city was shining with the red light of orchalcum. As the second most valuable element next to gold, orchalcum was found in the mines of Atlantis and lined the walls of that island's famous Temple of Poseidon. 
Analysis of the find revealed it to be a complex alloy of copper and zinc. And while many believe it was locally made in ancient Europe, some researchers argue that orcalcum matches metalwork mastered by the Incas of Peru. They believe this proves that the Greeks of antiquity found America long before later civilizations. The Zuni people Speaking of ancient civilizations in the Americas, deep research into the language of the Zuni tribe has revealed crazy similarities with the linguistics of Old Japan. Alaskan anthropologist Nancy Yaw Davis believes that a group of monks from the 14th century migrated to Mexico. As a grad student in 1960, her studies led her to find similarities between the Eastern beliefs in yin and yang and the Zuni religion. After years of research, she began working on her book and in the mid-1990s published her theories. Following a series of devastating disasters in Japan, Japan during the 11th and 12th centuries, sailors left the island nation and sailed far and wide looking for the mythological center of the universe. One expedition led by monks must have hit the ground in what is now California, and after bonding with several different Native American tribes, they united into a multicultural sect, searching for the promised land. Nancy cites similarities between many Zuni and Japanese words that bear no resemblance to any other Native American languages, and both cultures have a strong emphasis on ocean images. Other cultural and religious similarities are too close to ignore, and the Zuni even share blood types, bone structure, and kidney deficiencies. Historians have yet to embrace this idea, but America seems to have been a melting pot before the immigrations of the past couple centuries. The Los Lunas Mystery Stone Southern North America seems like it's been attracting people of retired age since the dawn of time, even more so after the boulder was found in New Mexico with the Ten Commandments etched onto it. And this isn't the work of some modern evangelical either, because these commandments are written in ancient Hebrew with a dash of ancient Greek for good measure. Whoever wrote this had the antiquated ability to speak, write, and mix the two languages in casual freehand. More curious is the fact that right next to the 80-ton stone slab is a tamaris, a genus of tree that the biblical Abraham is believed to have planted when he spoke to God. It's originally from the Middle East and further solidifies the mystery behind this rock that lies in the arid wilderness some 20 miles from Albuquerque. Archaeologists dated the stone carvings to between 500 and 2,000 years old and could have been made by seafarers from Greece or even by Jewish explorers traveling during King Solomon's reign. While many favor the more exciting option of this rock being the work of settlers from ancient times, some experts believe that this may have been the creation of Jews exiled from Spain who made their way to the Americans with the conquistadors in the 1500s. The Ancient Computer in 1901, the excavation of the 2,000-year-old shipwreck yielded a find so bizarre it predated the modern-day device to which it would be compared. The Antikythera mechanism has confounded experts for over a century, and its origin, in the first century BC, has made it known as the world's first computer. With many gears encased in a bronze box, the machine's shiftable plates are lined with characters of which it's been painstaking to decipher. Since many of the symbols are no more than 1.2 millimeters, scientists have spent years analyzing x-rays of each of the mechanism's layers. They found that the device would help track the phases of the sun and moon, the positions of celestial objects, and help users guess the colors of forthcoming eclipses. Greek culture, like most religions of the period, was very superstitious, and since colors of the sky often acted as omens, it's believed that the Antikythera mechanism was used by Greeks to tell the future. With 82 fragments of the device in the possession of researchers, it's hoped that the site of the original shipwreck can be explored further to find more parts. Currently, only a quarter of the device's characters have been defined, and hopefully, future excavations can shed more light on the universe as ancient Greece knew it. The Art of the Neanderthals Deep in Gorm's Cave, a windswept shelter overlooking the Mediterranean side of the Strait of Gibraltar, is a find that challenges our modern-day idea of caveman. On a patch of rocky wall about the size of a dinner plate are etchings that might be the oldest form of cave art. Dated to at least be 39,000 years old, it rivals cave paintings found elsewhere in Europe. These drawings are also set apart by the fact that they were likely done by Neanderthals. If true, this would prove Neanderthals in this region survived longer than their counterparts elsewhere in Europe, who died out due to changing climates, clashes with early Homo sapiens, and interbreeding with other early hominid species. The Neanderthals in this area lived on local seafood and bird life prior to dying out just 39,000 years before the present. 
With that in mind, it's more likely this art was made 40,000 to 45,000 years before we were born. While experts argue over brain power Neanderthals possessed and have yet to concretely prove Neanderthals understood symbols or had their own complex belief system, further analysis of the patterns of these carvings could reveal bombshell secrets about the Neanderthals. Since humans didn't even enter this area until 10,000 years after Neanderthals left, it's a good bet these classic cavemen had quite a creative side. The Library of Alexandria The loss of the Great Library of Alexandria is often viewed as one of history's great tragedies. With thousands of ancient texts and scrolls, the library acted as both a museum and central hub of learning and antiquity. At one point, a hundred internationally renowned scholars lived there full-time to translate and transcribe the massive volumes of important and cherished texts. Not only that, but unlike most other houses of learning from the period, it wasn't reserved for the wealthy or privileged alone. Whoever proved themselves worthy of all its knowledge was allowed inside. With all this in mind, the explosive visual in the library of burning to the ground makes for an impactful story, and Hollywood's used it regularly. But the boring truth of the matter is that, while Alexandria was sacked and burned by Julius Caesar in 40 AD and several others over the years, it's likely just fell into disrepair thanks to budget cuts. Roman Emperor Marcus Antonius stopped paying the sky and kicked out all foreign lecturers and teachers, while Alexandria's falling economy and regular riots left the library to rot. Maybe not as exciting of a story for the movies, but it sounds like a fight over government spending you would see wages today. The Discovery of Australia Marie Eisenberg, an enlisted man in the Australian military, was stationed on the Wessel Islands during World War II. There, just off the coast of Australia in a spot definitely not marked with an X, he found buried treasure. The gold coins had strange markings that were unfamiliar to the area, but as he wasn't an expert, he kept those valuables stored in a tin until the 1970s, when he took them to be appraised. The analyst identified four of the coins as property of the Dutch East India Trading Company. The rest had symbols of a lost civilization from modern day Tanzania. But how did African coins reach Australia when the first known explorer to set foot on the continent was a European named William Janzoon in 1606? What happened between Janzoon's arrival and the appearance of aboriginals 60,000 years before? Well, in the 1300s, the island of Kilwa off the coast of East Africa was the place to be. It had a soaring economy, a diverse population, and controlled trade throughout the Indian Ocean. With their seafaring techniques, this forgotten civilization broke ground in Australia and managed to expand their reach further than modern experts could have imagined. Although their capital city was sacked by the Portuguese in the 1500s, their culture lives on, hidden in the far reaches of the outback. Thanks for joining the hub in this epic journey into the unknown. These unsettling discoveries may be rewriting the history books, but there's more hidden wonders out there just waiting to be found. Keep following the hub to hear about these finds firsthand. We'll see you there.